Thank you everyone for, for joining. Um, just wanted to kick off the discussion with a pretty broad question about what uh, the largest issue that you have seen come up and be magnified um, by the pandemic in regards to um, gender and family issues. Who's gonna be first? Should it be me? <laughs> Go for it. Go ahead, Courtney. One of the things that I've really seen is um, how much trouble there has been in balancing what work-life balance was. Like, I don't really believe that there was a work-life balance to begin with because we're giving all of that we have everywhere we go. And I think a lot of that has um, seemed to have fallen on women because they're often not in uh, leadership roles. And so um, maybe if you're a partner with someone and they they have a higher performing job than you, then maybe that falls on you. And so I think I've seen that a lot from people on my social media feed that um, sometimes that, that burden can be shifted um, onto women. And I also want to bring that to the attention of if you're in a same sex couple, um, one of the things that we really do is um, try to break those binaries. So my wife and I have been day to day trying to figure out um, who is going to provide what service for our home and that uh, it just doesn't get to fall to one of us. So I also want to bring that into the conversation today, but not everybody's family looks like a mom and a dad. So, Courtney, this is Tiffany and thank you so much for pointing that out. In our family, we use the word lead parent <laughs> because we, because really that's just how it's shaped up in our house as I worked nights and my husband tended to have a more um, flexible schedule and was a lead parent. Um, in terms of um, how I see gender, you know, in the pandemic and now going forward post pandemic, again, my lens is advancing women leaders. So, you know, I see a huge opportunity for us. And I know many of you are seeing with your teams um, what's possible by working virtually. And there are plenty of companies who've been really resistant to that, didn't know what that looked like, and they're seeing fantastic results. And so I'm just really encouraged that women are really showing up and saying, this is what's possible. So um, going forward, I look for, for us to really um, begin to ascend those levers of leadership by showing what's possible. I think there's also a new appreciation for that second shift and now a third shift you know, for those here watching second shift being that, you know, making lunch in the morning, doing after school pickup, taking to dance or soccer, then doing laundry, you know, that whole job after the full time job. And now we add homeschool teacher to that. So there's just a real appreciation. One quick story. Um, I was listening to um, the, the husband of a healthcare worker who said, you know, for the first time I look at a basket of laundry in a whole different way. You know, I, I used to walk right past it. Now I walk past it and think, well, if I don't fold that, she's going to have to when she gets home. So, you know, again, a silver lining and seeing that by the same token, I think the challenges that we're going to face when we look at um, you know, where women seem to be present in our organizations, when organizations, you know, may boast about having a lot of women in their workforce, they tend to be individual contributors or managers. And as we look at, you know, companies pairing back and, and leaning up, um, you know, I'm concerned about our female workforce in that way, um, and how we're going to be affected in minorities as well, as you look at where we tend to populate a lot of these organizations. And then finally, I think it's, it's something where we've been aware of, but we're going to need to be more intentional about being visible in this virtual environment. And that's not going anywhere. Um, you know, while we're thrilled that we can work virtually and remotely, we are going to have to over communicate, be clear about our goals, and as women be willing to share our achievements, which we know, you know, according to research can be often hard for us to do. So going forward, women need to be really intentional in this space if we truly, you know, want to ascend to higher levels of leadership. And just to kind of piggyback off of what Tiffany was saying, um, before the pandemic, my husband would come home from work and I would list everything that I did for the entire day. So he knew I was doing something. And now that he's here more, he's like seeing everything that was invisible to him to keep our house cold going. So that has maybe made him look at a pile of laundry a little differently too and admitting that, yeah, I could probably help out with that a little bit more so it doesn't all fall on you. So I'm hoping that this might balance the 
second shift out a little bit more now that there's more visibility to all the invisible things that women tend to do in a household. David, what are your thoughts? Yes, there's a lot of things with the um, pandemic that hits us. Of course, a um, lot of changes and a lot of stress with all those changes. And what comes out of it, I think, is like the awareness that we're all connected. We all affect each other, largely subconsciously, and how our behaviors and reactive patterns kind of affect each other. And one of the things we have as individuals, we're, we're always part of a context with our family of origin, things we've been we've uh, experienced in our life, how we made sense of things. But um, one of our needs is like a um, togetherness force and a separateness force. We each have a little balance with that where we need to be alone or we need to be with other people. And all these the pandemic and the, and the uh, quarantine and the social isolation has brought a lot of challenge to that. Um, and again, when we're stressed, we kind of kick into automatics and we have, it brings out the best and the worst of us. We have more reactive patterns and mindful ones. We have to be really kind of calmer to be more mindful and make choices about how we want to respond rather than live in a reactive mode on a regular basis. But we're challenged with that in the pandemic. And so I find that um, people in the flow when things are different than they used to be, all the assumptions are kind of up for grabs, but we just hold to our automatics and then it creates tension and conflict. We need to find a way to find our, our boundaries, what we need. I've got an example, there's one um, couple I worked with that um, her style of dealing with her stress was having more knowledge, more understanding. She would listen to all the news feeds, read everything she could, and that in her mind was helping her cope. Her husband, on the other hand, was overly overwhelmed with it, stressed, kind of pulled away. And she was upset because he wasn't helping her and wasn't on the project of fixing things. So her view of how to do things was one. His was different, but they end up with conflict because they weren't joined together on that. When they, we talked about that and said, well, what she needs is this, what he needs is this, a different kind of level of togetherness and separateness. They learn to appreciate each other and find that they can do it together with different, their own personal needs that way. And so with the togetherness and separateness, some people are finding that, you know, being alone is kind of nice, but also the missing of other people. We realize how much we do need those social interactions and how stressful it is when we're not connected. So that issue of togetherness and separateness, which are forces within us, comes to the fore and, and challenges in new ways and has to be found. How do we adapt? How do we identify what's going on with me? How do we communicate that? How do we find a new path in the middle of these unknowns right now in this season of transition, this liminal space we're in right now in the COVID pandemic.